Welcome to my weekly market roundup, Sunday, 20th October 2019. I am Sagan Nandi, designer and developer of the Q trading systems and techniques. I used to work in IT, mostly in Singapore. I retired about 5-6 years ago. Nowadays, I am living in Thailand. I trade primarily stocks and stock options in the USA market as well as in global markets. This is my email ID. I regularly share my stock and market analysis in my traders forum sagarnandi.com and Twitter page sagarnandi and also share regular videos in the YouTube channel Trading Profitably. All of these are open to the public you are most welcome to make use of them. Let me go through the disclaimer first. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will look at oil and gold using technical analysis they tend to impact related stocks. Then I will look for potential trading opportunities using complete 360 degrees analysis. That is, I will try to look for trades where the market level force, sector industry force, fundamental strength or weakness, and the technical force all are aligned together. I call those trade setups 360 degrees trades and they tend to be truly high probability and low risk trades. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me move on with the live system. I begin the commodities analysis with oil. I am using the oil ETF USO and looking at it using the weekly backdrop template and daily hop on or entry template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. And you can do that using the unambiguous checklists for the four trade setups that I use. These four trade setups are designed for four distinct market conditions. One for trending, one for sideways, one for exhausting market and one for reversing market. At present, the market as well as several commodities are inside a range. They are moving sideways and when they are moving sideways, the best trading opportunities come when the instrument is at one of the edges of the range. That is true for US oil also. To visually see if an instrument is inside a range, I use these automatically drawn smart trend lines. I call them memory trend lines because they come from the past. In the daily chart, USO is bound by the support memory at the bottom, resistance memory at the top. And they are quite a distance apart, that is the instrument is in a wide range. When an instrument is in a wide range, the best trading opportunities come when it reverses at either of the edges. As you can see, a few days ago, oil tried to go below this memory support line but reversed, ended with a bullish shape candle. 
this memory support train line was coming from far far away. At the same time the weekly was also supported by memory train line. Looking at that you could start to buy oil right at the bottom. You could use the USO ETF for that or you could use short put vertical to take a bullish position in oil at that time. From there oil has gone up little bit and in the recent days it is moving sideways. If you took the trade using short put vertical your position is already in significant profit and you could book profit by Friday. What about at the right edge? At the right edge it is giving mixed signal. The daily traffic light candle color is bullish. However, the weekly backdrop candle color is bearish magenta. And the weekly shape is also indecisive. At this time you may avoid taking any directional swing trade in USO. Now I look at gold using the gold ETF GLD. In the technical trading system that I use Q Global on Metastock here, I use this reversal signal, possible reversal signal, bearish headwind at the top and if it comes at the bottom, it will be bullish headwind. I use this headwind signal to warn me of possible reversal. After displaying successive bearish reversal headwind signals at the very top, oil was steadily going down. During the downtrend that started from the top, you could take a go with flow that is trend following short trade on this magenta color candle and another one on this magenta color candle. You wouldn't take a go with flow trend following short trade on this middle magenta candle because that candle ended with indecisive shape with both upper as well as lower tails. On the other hand, you could take go with flow short trades at these two magenta color candles. For the first magenta color candle, as price dropped from there, you already hit your profit target, the lower boundary, and you would book profit. What about this go with flow short setup? From there, price drop. At the very low of this candle, you probably covered almost the same distance as the risk taken in the trade. You could book profit. If you were not prompt enough to book profit, how would you manage the trade? As of this Friday, you can see that GLD is inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory trend line at the top and support memory trend line at the bottom. When this magenta candle came, that met all the checklist requirements of the go with flow trend following short trade. So you would have taken the short trade without second guessing. Now at the right edge, you can see that it is moving sideways. There are multiple doji like candles that came on Friday as well as on Thursday and it is moving inside a narrow triangle pattern. The direction is not clear. Looking at that, if I took a go with flow short trade on this candle, I would exit that on Friday with a small profit. I will not continue to hold it because it is coming to the tip of the triangle and the direction is not clear. Because the direction is not clear in the daily chart, it is inside the triangle pattern. And the weekly shape is also indecisive, doji shape. You may not take any directional swing trade in gold right now.
from commodities i move on with market etf study that is looking at the highest level of the 360 degrees levels starting with the market level we saw that oil and gold both are indecisive on the technical charts and that is same in the market etfs as well here i am looking at s p 500 etf spy remember the headwind signal that i talked about during commodities analysis you can see that in action in the market etfs as well after displaying the bearish headwind at the very top and i mentioned the bearish headwind when it appeared in the weekly chart price had dropped in the daily also after displaying the bearish headwind here price drop after displaying the bearish headwind here price drop i mentioned about bullish headwind at the bottom after displaying bullish headwind here price went up and after displaying bullish headwind here price went up again that is why the people who use this technical trading system they are always cautious when they see the headwind signal at minimum if they have a position in the opposite direction they close it or protect profit using trailing stop and sometimes when all the headwind trade setup checklist conditions are met they confidently take a reversal trade you could probably take a reversal long trade at this point using the etf spy or using probably short put vertical and by now you have significant profit much more than the risk taken in that trade and you would book profit by friday what about now at the right edge the weekly shape is indecisive the body is hollow therefore it is bullish from that perspective but it has an upper tail it is bearish from the upper tail perspective making the overall weekly candle indecisive in the daily chart it is moving inside a range bound by support memory trend line at the bottom and this watermark pivot level at the top it is nearing the upper edge of the range what did i mention when an instrument is moving inside a range the best trading opportunities come near the edges of the range you could take a bullish headwind trade here bearish headwind trade here and bullish headwind trade here again now it is nearing the upper edge there is no trade right now if it reaches the upper edge and reverses from there then you will have a very low risk shorting opportunity in spy nasdaq etf qqq in the weekly chart it is inside a triangle pattern this week's candle shape is also indecisive that is once again telling us not to take a directional swing trade right now in the daily it is inside a range again bound by resistance memory at the top support memory at the bottom as i mentioned earlier the best trading opportunities come at the edges of the sideways range and on this day that is thursday i suggested taking a short trade right at the top at the level of the daily memory resistance i shared that in the public twitter page let me review that this was my first post on qqq on october 17th thursday at that time i showed using the technical charts that i use qqq was right at the memory resistance level in both weekly as well as daily chart on that day qqq had gapped up 
many people were bullish however looking at the memory resistances I suggested looking for a shorting opportunity using intraday chart my initial post on QQQ was at 940 a.m. I later on followed up with the real-time chart showing how confidently and easily you could take the short trade. I took it and I closed the trade with significant profit. How did I enter and manage the trade? On Thursday, price opened with a gap up. Soon after that, the early range low and the early range high pivot lines were drawn automatically on the 10 minute fine tune chart. As price went below early range low, it gave a gap short day trade opportunity. The way I use gap trade is explained in one of the books, Q trading books and the books are available from my traders forum sagarnandi.com when this yellow candle closed it gave me a gap short day trade and at the same time it closed below the memory resistances in weekly as well as daily charts therefore i could take the short trade more confidently i was taking it not only based on pivot levels on 10 minute chart but based on reversal from weekly and daily trend line resistances. When I took the short trade at this point my stop was just above early range high. This was my risk distance. As price fell from my entry point and hit the magenta pivot level more than the risk distance was covered and I booked at least partial profit. By doing that, I made the trade entirely risk free. After that, price didn't move up or down. The remaining position could be closed at the end of the day. This is an example of how you could use the real time fine tune chart to take extremely low risk short trade using the resistance levels, the memory resistance levels of the weekly as well as the daily charts. An example of trading at the edges of an instrument's sideways range. You could follow me on the Twitter page twitter.com sagarnandi for similar analysis and trading opportunities. Let me look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA now. This is also inside a triangle pattern in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart. The technique that I use to take a short trade in QQQ on Thursday, the exact same technique you could use to take a short trade in DIA on Friday. It went above the memory resistance in daily as well as weekly and then reversed. As it reversed and closed on an intraday 5 minute or 10 minute chart just below this memory resistance level, you could take a short trade. How much was your risk? Your risk was until the high of the day. From there price dropped and by the close of the day your profit was much more than the risk taken in the trade. You could close the day trade with significant profit. This is one ETF that closed the week with a bearish shape and bearish color candle in the weekly chart. And in the daily also, it ended with a bearish shape and bearish color candle. The next memory trend line support is some distance away. Looking at that, you could book partial profit in the 
short thread you took at the memory resistance and you could try to let profit run on the remaining position. Last of the four market ETFs that I look at every week is IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF. In the weekly, it is inside a wide range, wide triangle. It is at the upper end of the triangle. That is not a point where you may look for a long trade. Instead, you may look for a shorting opportunity. In the daily also, it is inside a wide range formed by resistance and support memory trend lines. In the daily, it is inside the middle of the wide range triangle. This is also not a place where you would like to take a directional swing trade. If price reverses down from here, you may look for a short trade using intraday time frame. Then you will be relying on the down move in the intraday chart and also you will be relying on the memory resistance reversal in the weekly chart. The market level analysis, the highest level analysis in my 360 degrees analysis is telling not to take directional swing trades right now because all the four market ETFs are moving inside a range. What can we gather from the sector level? the next level analysis. Here I am looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents last five days, one week's performance, the green bar previous week's performance and the blue bars two weeks performance. Before that, together they represent one month of sector performance. Any bar to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up, any bar to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week, seven of the sectors went up and four went down. Overall, that is showing bullishness at the sector level. Most of the green bars are also positive, showing one week ago also the sectors were overall bullish. Prior to that, for two weeks, the sectors dropped heavily, as shown by the significantly negative blue bars. What is our conclusion? The current week is bullish. The previous week is also bullish, but before that, it was bearish. If we look at the sectors that drop, energy drop, that is not a defensive sector. Consumer staples also drop. That is defensive. Utilities drop, defensive. Materials drop, non-defensive. The sectors that drop are a mixture of defensive as well as non-defensive sectors. From there, we cannot see the bullishness in the market. What about the sectors that went up? Healthcare may be considered a defensive sector that is the best performer. That is not entirely bullish for the market. Whereas financials, industrials and consumer discretionary all went up. These are non-defensive sectors that shows the bullishness of the market. It is showing a mixed picture. Still at the weekly level, seven sectors went up, four went down. We have to say objectively that based on the weekly sector performance, the market was bullish. At the same time, on Friday, market dropped. Let's have a look at Friday's sector performance. I now switch to the real-time sector industry rotation analysis tool that I use. I have 
switch streaming to off to save bandwidth during market hours i click the play button to switch streaming on and i can look at the sector industry rotation analysis in truly real time as i mentioned just now over one week period seven sectors were up four were down however over one day period that is friday only three sectors were up and eight were down this magenta bars show all the down sectors on friday energy is again the worst performer it is the worst performer over one day as well as over one week if you look at the sectors that went down on friday energy went down communication services consumer discretionary infotech materials all are non defensive sectors most of the non defensive sectors went down that is friday's market was largely bullish from a sector analysis point of view as well that is what is resulting in indecision in the market at the sector level also so the week was bullish friday was largely bearish another reason to stay away from taking any directional trades right now in the 360 degrees analysis technique that i use i first look at the market level market was telling me not to take directional trades then i look at the sector level sector level is more bullish than bearish but still because friday was bearish it is better to exercise caution and avoid taking trades right now when that is the conclusion from the market level and sector level analysis i don't want to spend too much time looking into stocks during the week the coming week if i see 360 degrees trading opportunities that is opportunities where market sector fundamental technical all the levels are aligned i will post them in the twitter page and also in my traders forum instead of looking for trading opportunities now let me look at the latest post in the usa traders forum I analyzed one stock DocuSign I had shared the analysis 2 days ago on DocuSign using the industry analysis fundamental analysis and technical analysis let me explain how I zeroed in on this stock docusign i started with the sector industry rotation analysis i can see the sector rotation for the 12 monthly periods as well as recent periods of 10 day 5 day 2 day and 1 day cyan color represents strength magenta represents weakness when i sorted by one day performance I see that energy and infotech are the worst performers. Magenta color represents weakness. They are the worst performers. Energy, as you saw, was weak for a long time. It is the worst performer. Wow, for all the review periods from one day to twelve month period. So the best shorting opportunities might have passed long time ago. the next weakest sector was infotech and from the base column i saw that it was decelerating as well that is where i wanted to drill down to look for potential short setups therefore from the infotech sector i wanted to drill down to the industry level that next level in the 360 degrees analysis to look for the worst performing industries in the infotech sector 
and two of them were system software and application software related industries now i am part of several forums one of the forums that i am part of people tend to use ibd techniques to take trades and i remember several of them were looking at docu docu sign d o c u is the ticker symbol as a potential long setup i had looked at the stock it was overvalued and i remembered it was part of the application software industry the industry level was telling me on friday that it is better not to take a long trade in docu sign and i already knew it was overvalued as well how did i know that i use the fundamental and peer analysis tool let me do a real time analysis on the stock peer analysis using the docu sign as root stock industry as the peer relationship it is connecting with refinitiv zenith used to be thomson reuters icon and collecting data about the stock docu once it retrieves information about the stock what it does its industry sector information etc it retrieves all the peer stocks that is industry peers and then further calculates fundamental scorecard for docu and all the peer stocks from the snapshot instantly you can see valuation is overvalued for both the valuation parameters and earnings quality is also poor the quarterly earnings growth is showing that it has decreasing and negative earnings growth in the latest quarter those were the reasons from a fundamental analysis point of view for me not to look for a long trade instead look for a short trade the industry was weak fundamentally the stock was overvalued with negative earnings growth time to look for a short trade and if you had a long position you might start to book profit or at least protect profit using trailing stop the sector was one of the worst performers in fintech the industry application software was one of the worst performers in infotech sector and this stock docu though many traders were looking for a buy setup i did my objective analysis and saw that it was overvalued with reducing earnings growth from the sector level industry level fundamental level everywhere i could see only weakness therefore even if others were looking for a buy setup i was not going to do that i was going to follow my own technique and i decided not to take a long trade instead look for a shorting opportunity provided i had a low risk technical short setup that is the analysis that i shared in the traders forum i attached the snapshots as of 10:40 am the industry was weak fundamentally the stock was looking weak to me and this is how the daily chart looked like around 10:40 am eastern standard time once again the bearish headwind appeared right at the very top it could catch the very top once again after that price is starting to roll over and as of the time i shared the snapshot it reversed back below the watermark resistance level looking at that looking at that false upside breakout you could switch to intraday chart and short it right at the watermark resistance level and using intraday time frame your stop loss for the day would be just above day high this was the snapshot as of the time i posted the topic in traders forum 
let's look at DocuSign using real time chat. See how the stock ended Friday. This is DocuSign using daily chart as of Friday's market close. Using the analysis that I shared in Traders Forum, you could short the stock right at this price point as it was going below the watermark resistance on the intraday time frame. Your stop would be just above day's high using real time chart. Your risk was this distance. From there, price fell a lot. And at the lowest point, you had covered much more than the risk taken in that trade. In fact, as price was falling on Friday using intraday pivot level in real time chart, fine tune chart, you would book profit once the risk distance was covered, at least partial profit, and the remaining profit you could book using trading stop. Once again, using 360 degrees analysis, you could take a very profitable short trade confidently in a stock that others were looking into for a possible buying opportunity. That was an example of top-down analysis, looking at the market level, sector level and industry level, finding sideways move at the market level, weakness at infotech sector level and weakness at system software, application software, industry level and then looking for a shorting opportunity from one of the stocks DocuSign that I heard of from a traders forum. I could also carry out the complete top down analysis that is from sector level I looked at the industry level. I found system software and application software to be the weakest ones and drill down into their stocks. Out of all these stocks, only two stocks, 8 and LPSN are overvalued. Their valuation is in magenta color. I could also apply the smart filter to zero in on them. Let me look at LPSN. This is also a stock that probably some traders were looking to buy. However, I saw once again this stock is overvalued with negative earnings growth in the latest quarter, negative earnings growth in the yearly period as well. Earnings quality is poor. F fundamentally, this stock is looking weak to me based on objective data analysis and it dropped by a massive 9.19% on Friday. Again, a stock where I am not going to look for a buy setup even if others are looking to buy the stock. What about its technical charts? LPSN using weekly, daily at a glance template. Once again in the weekly chart, the very top was caught by the bearish headwind signal. Since then price is not able to go up. This week initially it tried to go up shown by the long upper tail but then it fell sharply. Ended the week with a bearish shape and bearish color candle. In the daily chart, it came very close to the watermark resistance level. There was a bearish headwind at this point. Price tried to go above that level and then reverse sharply on Friday. Using the technique of trading at the edges, using a reversal setup, you could switch to intraday time frame and short the stock right as it was reversing below this watermark resistance. Your stop for the day would be above day's high and as price fell sharply, you would have a profit that was much bigger 
than the risk taken in the trade and you would book profit in the trade. The stock is looking weak both in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart. There is a memory support nearby and Friday's candle was a large bearish candle. I would not short the stock now because the stop would be far away. However, if I had a long position, I would be cautious. Certainly close that position if this memory support is broken. That was an example of complete top-down analysis, looking at the sector level, finding weakness in Infotech, finding two of the weakest industries, system software and application software, drilling down into their stocks, finding overvalued stocks with negative earnings growth, and then finally looking at the technical charts to see weakness there as well. Conclusion is not to take a long position in LPSN right now. If you took a short trade on Friday using the reversal from the watermark resistance level at bearish headwind price level, you could book partial profit and continue to hold the remaining position to let profit run. If you had a long position initiated long time ago, you may see if the next memory support is broken. If so, you may exit the position with profit. Let me summarize. The market is moving sideways. It's safer to avoid directional trades right now. At the sector level, there is bullishness over one week. However, bearishness on Friday, significant bearishness. That is what is resulting in me suggesting not to take any new directional trade right now. As I demonstrated, whatever be the market condition, even in sideways market condition, using the concept of trading at the edges, taking reversal trades using support resistance levels, you are able to always find low risk, high probability trading opportunities. I shared such trade setup for QQQ in the Twitter page and also a possible trade setup in DocuSign in the Traders Forum. You may follow me on the Twitter page and also on the Traders Forum to see more trading opportunities as I share them. And I always tend to share them almost always based on real-time market analysis. I don't like to, to look back analysis that is looking on a past date and showing how greatly profitable such a trade could happen. I believe in sharing analysis based on live market data. You are most welcome to make use of these analysis. They are all open to the public, both the Traders Forum as well as the Twitter page. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.